All right. So I wanted to try and build a architecture and I wasn't sure what to do because, you know, a, a processor plugin is pretty complicated and would take a good several hours to do, I think. Um, so I found this, uh, this VM CTF or something. Um, hey guys and, uh, ladies. And, uh, so I found this on Malwaretech blogs thing. Um, and it's like this really small crack me basically. Um, let me see if I can pull up the, um, the website here real quick. Got it somewhere. Ba, 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 ba. Where'd I go? Damn, what did I do with it? All right, well, that's frustrating. Let me see if it's on my other desktop. Yes, here it is. Okay. Let's we'll bring that over here. So, uh, this is some simple 8 bit virtual machine VM. Um, and some other random stuff. Um, and I haven't really looked at this too much yet. Um, I just kind of glanced at it and thought to myself, you know, an eight bit, uh, eight bit VM, that should be pretty simple. Probably not a lot of stuff. So maybe we can write a little architecture to implement it. And then we can look at it in binary ninja and that'll kind of give an idea of how to start building an architecture. Um, so let's um, let's actually look at this and figure out what's going on first. And it looks like it's pretty simple. It's got like some MD5 thing that's not really all that important. Um, creating a heap thing, allocating. Uh, looks like it's then writing that to this uh, thing. That's probably going to be our flag. Um, and let's go ahead and switch to medium level IL. Oops, this one. And go ahead and do this. Actually, this is going to be PP flag, I think, and flag like that. So this is then going to be flag as well. It would be really nice if medium level IL had uh, the ability to kind of fold some of these variables. Uh, but that's not really um, something they want to do in medium level IL. I think they're going to do that in high level IL. So anyway, so we've got this thing that it's uh, bringing from 40, 40, 40. Uh, I just hit O to turn that into a data variable. Um, and if you we look at that, we've got this here. And this is like some little binary blob. Not really sure what's going on here yet. Um, but if we switch to hex mode, let's go ahead and select one FB bytes. So that's what it's going to copy over to our location. So I think it's pretty safe to assume that this is our memory and bytecode probably. Um, so, well, let's say VM bytecode. Whoa, I just crashed Binary Ninja. That was pretty fun, huh? All right, we'll save that crash. This happens like every single time I do this. I find at least one bug when I stream. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, um, let's go ahead and save this as a BNDB so I don't have to keep redoing all of my stuff. Um, oh, y'all are gonna... 
I'm gonna bring that over here so you don't see all my random ass documents and stuff. Um, let's see. So I'll save that in my episode three folder. All right. So we've got this. Let's go ahead and redo that. Oh, that's weird. Why is it going to? Seems like it's going to medium level IL first. But anyways, um, so this was PP flag, and that was P flag. Although actually, now that we know this is bytecode, this is going to be bytecode. All right, and so then we call some function, and it looks like they take the the first bytes of this and digest string. So, uh, so yeah, so that's going to be the first whatever is going to be the string. So I think we can kind of assume that um, the starting at forty, forty, forty right here, this thing of zeros is gonna be where it actually stores the memory of like the, the string that they're doing. And I'm gonna bet that this is the one that needs to be decrypted right there. So um, yeah, let me save in case I accidentally crash it again. Um, we should get a, uh, um, a crash report soon and then we can look at it and see, figure out what it is but let's not get distracted. So I'm gonna assume this is the run VM function. Let's go ahead and look in that. And yeah, we've got this little loop. So this is gonna be like a interpreter probably. And let's see, so. Let's see, what's var5 doing? ECX1, five. Well, that seems a little weird. What's happening there? So 2308. Why is it doing that? Look at that. Here's another bug. Does it think that var yeah, so, okay. So if you look at this, uh, I'm gonna screenshot this shit. Um, so if you look at this, it's moving var5 into CL, but then it's adding CL. So what's going on here such that it thinks that this value is always zero. I wonder, well, okay, we're gonna have to figure that out at some point. Man, that's so weird. All right, let's just look at the assembly then. All right, now let's do low level IL. Maybe we can figure it out. So we've got some variable that we're setting to zero and then we're moving it into here edx is going to be our byte code and then we're jumping ahead fff so that means that if we're right here X four zero four zero four zero four zero plus zero X F F. This should work because uh, Peter added that parsing thing. Oh, there's our uh, crash report. We'll look at that in a second. Yes, so that is where we go. So it starts as a one. Oops, how did I get in my function window? Uh, 
Oh, I ping space because I'm like, go back to the function, but I can't go back to the function because I'm in the data section. It's fun having people watch me on screen do stuff. It's plus equals. So here's the thing. Wait. Yeah, it should be a plus equals, but right there. Um, sorry, I just looked over at chat. Um, yeah, so it should be a plus equals right there, but it's not. It's a, a just a, a one. So that's that's really weird. But you can see in the IL, the low level IL, it's got the right thing. It says it equals plus one. That's really weird. I wonder why it does that. Oh, well, I'm going to have to report that. So anyways, um, yeah, so we get this value here. Um, let's see, where do we do that? And that gets pushed into called in there. So let's just mark that index. And this is going to be some sort of index as well, probably but I can't rename it in low-level IL, so that's kind of annoying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, it should be. So, we get it again here, and we do it again. Uh, why do we do that again? Another X question mark, question mark. Oh, it sets it there, so that's index plus one. So it's taking, we do it again here. Yeah, so it looks like it's putting a bunch of stuff together. Um, so this is gonna take, looks like four things or something into different variables that then get pushed in to right here. And then this is gonna be index plus one, I think. Actually, hang on. So this is going to be put there, then it's going to get it again, increment it, put it there. So it looks like we get three bytes all at the same time. Um, so let's do bytecode index, and then bytecode byte one. Whoop. Byte one, whoop, flow graph bug sometimes happens. Byte two, and then byte three, whoop, not byte 23. All right, I wonder, do the other ones have that too? Oh, I see the constants. It's just setting it equal to it because it knows what's going on here. Ah, uh, okay, so it's not a bug. This is constant folding. Um, so it knows that this starts at zero. It's gonna be one. Yeah, that's what it's trying to do there, but then it doesn't, it doesn't, take into account that it's getting set uh, again here. That's the that's the bug, is that right after this, it should be bytecode index equals ecx1.cl. Um, but since it tried to fold it, because it sees these being done, and then it does the loop and doesn't realize that um, it's now gonna use that again. So this is the inset of value zero three uh, is not right. Yeah, the, the loop, I think, is what's throwing it off. Um, okay, I keep getting distracted by this bug. I need to just ignore it um, for now. Okay, so we know what's going on there then. Um, and so this is going to be... What do I do? Bytes. Yeah, so byte one, it increments it. So we don't really need those. So then here we're going to get byte one. 
Like two. Ooh. You're scaring me every time you do that. You could make me think I'm gonna crash it. Then we can go ahead and do it here too. Why does it think that's gonna be a character pointer? Let's see, so then EAX is gonna, the byte that comes back from that is put into ECX, and if ECX is not zero, then it loops. And if it is, so this is probably something like is finished. Or actually let's call it halt. So, Let's go into here. Now we're actually gonna figure out what, how uh, an instruction is done. Um, so, byte one zero D, what is that instruction? Ah, okay, so that one, oh, it's the offset. Sorry, this should be, like that because it didn't actually read the byte from it it just got the pointer to it I think where did it now I'm getting myself confused oh no it's a stack thing so yes I am really dumb so but it's because they passed in these, I might as well just do a uint 32 t That'll fix it. So this is byte one. Go ahead and just keep naming these. Really? You're killing me, Vector35. So that was a renderer bug. Now I've got it on recording, so I can just give them that, I guess and tell them to try and repro it, which I've never been able to repro it. Uh, so that's kind of annoying. Okay, so here's our opcodes. So our opcode is one, it does this. If our opcode is two, it does this. If our opcode is three, it does this. And otherwise it halts. And uh, so it looks like zero is halt. And let's see what these do. So we get bytecode. We, yeah, so this is P bytecode, not to be confused with PP bytecode. And this is gonna be an offset. And this is going to be a P byte. And we'll just change this to an UNT 32T as well. Oh, wait, no, that one is actually a byte. So this one is then going to be the actual byte. And looks like we are just copying that byte to that location. So one is just like copy through. Um, then let's, interesting. Okay, so two is gonna be p, p, byte, p byte code and offset and then interesting that they overwrite that i guess they're just reusing the stack variable um, 
that's yeah, that's weird that that also doesn't get um, changed to a. Uh, when do I do that? Yeah, it's weird that that doesn't get a um, a new version. Seriously. All right. So that doesn't increment. So I guess that's another. Yeah, so that's just some random byte that uh, some byte that they're using. So let's find out what's going on with that. Oh, that's where three comes in. Um, so this is going to be our key byte. It looks like, and this is going to be PyCode. code, and we're reusing byte one again. So then we're going to uh, XOR that um, plain text and hmm. Oh, I see. So well, maybe I don't see. I think I see, but I'm not sure. I can't really like formulate the the words in my head for some reason. Um, I'm sure most of you uh, are pretty good uh, at reversing and stuff, and so you're very familiar with the fact that uh, just renaming stuff is like the main thing you do when you're reversing. So I hope this isn't boring to anybody. Um, so plain offset. Although it's the same place, so it's doing an in, in place uh, XORing. The interesting thing is if we go there, here we are. I guess this must be the offset that it's using, and it's just doing an in place. Uh, XOR and so that like this is all just zeros so we'll we'll end up seeing what what goes on there um, all right so it looks like we have uh, three instructions with if you unless you count this one which is just gonna be like a halt no matter what um, so the default is halt so Let's try and make a little architecture. I think it's going to be one basic block. Um, so this should be pretty quick. Um, so let's see what we can do. Um, uh, yeah, let's call it VM Arch. Now, I can never really remember how to do all of this stuff. Um, so we're going to take a look at some of the API stuff uh, to remember all of the different things that I need to do. So address size, I think it's safe to say that's going to be uh, one. So, because our uh, offset can only be one. Um, default in size, let's say that's gonna be one as well. Um, don't need endianness, don't have any flags. This is gonna be a really simple one. I don't think we even have any registers. Or a stack. Max instruction length. I need that one. That's going to be three. Are y'all seeing something weird in the... Oh, no, that was just a tooltip that was on top of my OBS. That was really strange. You can tell I'm running a really professional operation right here. Um, so let's say... Let's say we do have a reg. Um, we're going to have one. 
and I we're gonna call it key and we need register info if I remember this correctly so tell me what it's supposed to be no all right let's go look at our architecture nope not there swear it's register info function register info that's a very strange place for that one to be um, full width reg is gonna be key and it's gonna be can't get that down there no All right, so offset is going to be uh, it's going to be size one, and zero is the offset. Actually, I don't even need that. I think this is all we need. Yeah. Hmm. Some byte could be called a register too. Let's try. It. I agree. Let's do that, just to give us some interesting stuff. Um, let's call that um, register C. All right, so we got our registers. Let me go ahead and save this. Large.py. All right, so we got that. Let's go back to our. Uh, make this a little bigger all right let's go back to our architecture look see if there's anything else we need down here oh name that one's kind of important I think that's all we need for that. Um, whoop. I am really bad at this. All right. Can't remember. And it doesn't need anything, so we're good there. Don't think we even need to um, do anything with that. So let's just not even bother defining that. So the ones that we definitely need are uh, get instruction info, and that's self, uh, data, and adder, I believe. So let, let me double check that. Get instruction info, data, and adder, yeah. And then we're going to need get instruction text. And then we're also going to need get instruction low level IL. Um, so let's go back here, do a pass here, def get instruction text. And then All right, so um, let's get, let's do another one too that we'll call parse instruction. Uh, because we're gonna have to parse the instruction in each of these and it's really annoying to have to like just duplicate it every single time. So we have three bytes, um, which is gonna be, let's go back and look real quick. Um, so byte one was our op code. 
Why is it doing that? Entry value ECX. Oh, it's saving ECX, I think. Does it use ECX before it writes to it ever? No, okay, so yeah, it's just saving it, but then it doesn't actually pop it off. That's really weird. Huh, that's kind of silly. Anyways, sorry, rabbit hole. My, uh, my ADD meds are wearing off. Um, all right, so opcode, um, offset, and what was the other one? Byte three is the other byte. Oh, is the byte to store. So we might not actually use byte three in all of them. Yeah, I think that's the only place we actually use byte three. Okay, so we store that byte. Um, so we'll just call that one byte. Uh, no value. Um, and that's gonna be uh, data three. I think that'll work. Let's see. What happens if I do that? Uh, A, B, C. Yeah, okay, so it'll do it on a list too. Wasn't sure, so I wanted to just check. Um, I guess I could just return those. This is generally what you would do for parsing, but um, w since we have very little to do, it's, uh, very simple. I don't even think we need the address. We never actually go back or anything, um, but we might as well pass it in. So instruction info returns um, an instruction info object, I believe. Yes. Um, so let's go look at what that has. Oh yeah, I don't care if you mention stuff. I mean, if you start telling me that I'm like dumb or something, I'm gonna probably not be happy about it. But um, if you have suggestions, I'm perfectly happy with that. I don't know how long ago you actually asked that because uh, I'm only just now looking at it, but you know. All right, so instruction info. Also in the function module. Don't think we actually need to do much here. Yeah, it's only if, if you have a branch that you really need to do something, uh, it looks like. So um, we just have to return it um, and set the length on it, it looks like. Yeah, so we can't return it yet. Um, so normally, uh, I was kind of hoping that this would be a little bit more involved, but it doesn't actually have any branching, so uh, that's kind of a bummer. But normally, it, you'd be like, if this is a, uh, a jump instruction, then you would do something like info dot add branch, and you'd do branch type dot true branch, uh, and then like the target kind of thing. And you'd add all of those different branches, your un in undetermined ones that uh, um, it doesn't know, um, that kind of thing. You can also specify another architecture, so like that's used for ARM. Um, to jump to thumb stuff, you can specify to do that. Or if you've got some crazy like x64, x32 thing going on where you can jump between the two architectures, uh, you could do something like that. Um, but we don't actually need that, so we just have to set info.length to three, and then we return info. And then when we come here, we're gonna do the exact same thing 
here. Uh, and here we're going to return instruction info texts, uh, a list of them. Um, so let's, let's do something like this. Um, not codes. Um, let's do one is going to be set. Two is going to be, I don't even remember what it does. Oh, it's um, get, we'll call it. And then three will be XOR. Um, let's see. So now we need to make our tokens. So this is this function is the one that actually generates the um, the stuff you actually see. Uh, you can't see my hand pointing right now, but um, everything from here on is what's. Uh, I guess I should go to the. Yeah, so everything from here on is what our tokens. Um, if you look at, uh, block, let me see, can I get, I don't think I can actually do this, nope. Um, um, let's see, next current basic block. Get me it. No? Okay. That's really annoying. Oh. No, it should be. Current basic block should do it. I guess I'll just have to call iter directly. Yeah, there we go. So if we take uh, that and we look at um, what that actually is. Oops. Because it, sorry, it gives you the list, but then it also gives you the length of the instruction. Um, so we want this. So you get, see, this is an instruction text token. And it, then if we do something like, um, if we do something like dot type, you can see that this one is an instruction token, and that's why it's yellow. Um, and if you look at this one, it's a text token, which is the, the comma there. Um, the next one is going to be the register token. Oh, the this area it was that text one. And then this is the register token. You should have another text token after that. So the commas are going to be a text token. This is going to be a text token, a text token. And then this will be, uh, let's see, that's minus two. That's going to be a possible address token, and that's why it's uh, you can have that like pointer there. So, the first thing that we want to do is um, we're going to append um, our opcode. We're going to do an instruction. Oops. Uh, so we're going to do an instruction text token, and we want an instruction text token type, which means I need to import this as well. Oops. And this one is going to be an instruction token. So... What was my next thing? Let's see. Next, I need the text of the token, which is going to be opcodes um, opcode. And then value is equal to zero. Um, let's go ahead and set value equal to opcode. Eh, seems like a, a nice thing to do. And size. I think sized is like how many bytes it takes up. So let's 
can't remember. Let's, um, I think we've got a, they're all three, so let's just say it's three. All right. And what did I do wrong? Oh, I've got an extra. All right, so we've got, what is going on with you? Don't like that. On keyword after keyword arc. Oh, I don't really need those because I put them in the correct order, but you know, whatever. All right, so let's create the opcode token. And then let's create the offset token since that one we actually always do. Um, let's go, no, let's go ahead and do a, uh, go format string. FYI, I'm using Python 3, so I have nice format strings. Let's see, I can do something like, um, 06s and I think that will give me some spaces there. Maybe not invalid syntax. Oh, hang on. Got to switch my Python in Visual Studio so it knows that I'm on Python 3. All right, so we got that. Um, so now it'll have some nice spaces there for us. And let's do a instruction text token type. And this is going to be an integer token. Actually, yeah, let's just do an integer token. It doesn't, we could do, oh, no, let's do a possible address. Um, and then this one, I think we just do a string of offset value equals offset size, let's say one. Maybe size is the, is the size of the, uh, let me see, does it tell me? No, I think usually it tells me what the different things are here, but oh well. Okay, maybe size is, um, is the size of the parameter. So let's just do that since we know it's gonna be one byte. All right, um, and then I think we want to do if opcodes, if opcode is one, then we also want to do an append no. This one is going to be an integer token. All right. And then I think we want to return tokens and the length. Really, normally you would return length from parse instruction as well. So let's do that. Okay. 
far over. Oh, still under 70, uh, 80, so. There we go. All right, so let's see what happens if we do this. So we've got our get instruction info, our get instruction text value. Yeah, I don't know what value is for. Um, oh, so value, I know what value is for. I'll, I'll say that. So size, I think, might be related to like when you're changing the display type of an integer. Um, value is the numerical value of the token versus the string value, uh, which is the text. Um, so the uh, if you have something like um, the, say, the clemency architecture that I wrote uh, for a DEF CON uh, competition a few, a couple years ago, um, or maybe that was last year, Anyways, um, the uh, the way that we set the architecture up was that uh, if since it was that weird nine bit architecture or whatever, um, it was we would actually expand the nine bits into sixteen bits, and then that's what we would pass in to the uh, um, the architecture plugin, and then each um, each byte that was nine bits was actually read in as 16 bits. Um, so then that ended up meaning that all of our offsets were twice as large as they needed to be. Um, so what we would do, what we could do was actually display uh, for like branches uh, in the instruction token. Uh, we could display the correct offset. Uh, so like jump to 15 but the value itself would be uh, 30, which was the representation in what we were actually reading in. And so then you could still double click on that address and it would jump to the right place, but you would actually see what the disassembly should actually look like. Um, so you can do some wonky things like that um, with text and value. They don't actually have to match. Um, so that's kind of a, it can be useful. Um, in particular with like possible address token and stuff like that. Um, so anyways, um, all right. So the next thing we have to do is actually do a VM arch dot register and save that. And then I need to, uh, if I can remember my key binding, yeah, for my terminal. All right, so I need to do an ln dash s document three. So three, uh, we call it vm arch .py, and then we need to put that in applications. Wait, no, we need to put that in applications. No library. Application support binary ninja plugins. Uh, so that way I don't have to copy it over there. Um, so let's go ahead and close this and open it back up. Hopefully, I don't have any issues. All right, I see no errors in my log, so let's, yes, so, look. Oh, man, I keep doing that lately. Ugh, killing me. Why is it not connecting? Uh, okay, there we go. All right, so, let's, really? Okay, whatever. So architecture.list, let's see what all we got. Um, ignore some of my funky ones from doing really hacky stuff, but you can see we have a VM arch. Um, ooh.
self.rx self.stack pointer. Okay, there we go. That's a uh, we need a stack pointer. Self.stack pointer. Huh. There is no concept of a stack, so let's just um, create one and doesn't really need one, but whatever. Let's see what happens now. All right, no error that time. Um, yeah, I know. I've uh, I've done the ln s thing so many times for plugins that it's just like muscle memory at this point. Um, because I don't like to actually put anything in the plugins directory because who wants to actually like go to the plugins directory to open stuff? Um, all right, so let's see what we have here if it will actually work for us. Um, so let's come down here. I believe this is where we started. So let's try and create a function here. Nope, okay, that didn't work. And we got 444 errors, awesome. Okay. What? Equal alignment not allowed in string format specifier? Okay. Look at me failing at format strings. Oh, I think it defaults to center. So let's try that. Wow, that might have actually solved a bug I have in something else that I was never able to figure out what was going on with it uh, like six months ago and I gave up. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that now and see if I can if that's the issue. Aw, thanks, ciphertext. All right, so let's try it again. Make sure we're there. Architecture list. Okay, so let's go find our byte. Oops, that is not what I wanted. Good thing I have undo. Oh, yeah, maybe uh, zeros was not the correct answer. So we're uh, got a little bit better here. Um, and actually I wonder, yeah, we get a an error there, key error four. So this up here, where is it? Um, I need a default. Is default dict a, uh, no. Default dict is not a default thing. I think it's collections, maybe? Yeah. Default data factor is called without arguments to produce a new value when a key is not present. So we just want lambda pop. There we go. 
because I forgot about that halting uh, thing. All right. So that should get us our halt at least. And this, I think, is supposed to be a dot maybe to fix that. And let's do the same thing here. I think it's uh, it's gonna be at least three, so let's do a four D, and same here. Um, value. All right, let's see. What do, what will that give us? I think it might try to run forever, so we might, we have a, oh, I know what we should do. So the last thing that we should do here um, is, uh, we do get to use instruction info here. So if opcodes, opcode, and we're gonna add a branch and we're gonna do a branch type, branch type dot function return. And that will make it stop. So let's. Um, yeah, Cybertext, by the way, uh, you uh, missed at least one crash. Did I not? Did I not do it? Add branch? What did I do? Oh, info. Yes, thank you. Go ahead and do that again. The downside to an architecture uh, plugin is that you can't like reload it like you can a uh, a regular plugin. So I have to sit here and close it and uh, redo it. So let's see. Actually, I want the log open. Love this command palette. It makes it so easy. Database out of date. Did my binary ninja update since I saved this? Huh, anyways, um, let's see, because I actually have to go real soon. Uh, hopefully we can get this working. All right, so we have to do this instead of P, um, because if you press P, it's gonna choose the default architecture um, and seeing as we're in a, uh, a binary, it's already going to pick x86. So let's see what happens if we do this this time. We get more crashes. Precision not allowed in integer format. Okay, somebody, somebody help me with how you actually like do a format of a string with spaces. I thought it was, maybe it's 4.d? See, I can remember the uh, ln-s ordering of things, but I can't make a fucking integer display in a format string. So we all have our strengths. All right. One more time. Actually, you know what? Let's open the RAM. So this is the exact same thing. Um, it's just... Uh, a copy of just the binary blob that's the RAM. So now I can actually hit P, I think. Nope. Why are you not? 
Weird. P is not working for some reason. Um, Jordan, you might want to look into that. Okay. I got something there. Oh, 2021 errors this time. Okay, I'm throwing an X. Value error, missing format specifier, missing precision. Oh my God, I give up. I give up. Tab, there, tab. Yeah, it's the new Python 3 formatting string, which I love, but I am just like horribly failing at tonight. All right, I swear we're gonna get this to work. Just bear with me. This is all part of the process of building a uh, um, an architecture is fixing your typos and going back in and then fixing your typos and going back in. <laughs> Why is... That is really bothering me that I can't, um, uh, just make function it. Ooh, that's nice. And that is also weird. Here's another bug. Uh, I'm going to have to go back through this, uh, stream and write them all down. Apparently if you use tabs in, uh, in a basic block, it will go out of the the bounds. So, okay. Let's just do this. All right. That one's a, a pretty funny one. Gotta save that one too. Oops. All right, let's see. So, oh man, I love the command palette. Command P VM gives me make construction. Oh, now what have I done? Get instruction low level IL takes three. Oh, that's right. Oh, I made the the thing at zero, that's why. Um, uh, this one is. Oh, no, that's not what I want. I want the architecture one. I think the IL is at the end, but I want to make sure. Data address IL, yeah. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to move this to right here. because I don't want to put that zero. Now we can also make this a little clearer. All right. Let's see if we can actually get it to work this time. All right, so now I'm gonna highlight there. There we go, that looks a little better. So now we have this nice thing, look at that. So we can see that it sets a bunch of stuff. 
see what happens if we change this to a uh oh definitely need more space for that i forgot about the uh the decimals Hmm. Yeah, I'm usually looking at the Python docs too, but I was trying not to look too noobish, um, which completely failed me, obviously, with all of the the crashes that or uh, exceptions and stuff that I kept having. Um, yeah, so we've got a bunch of sets, and then we have... XORs, it looks like it just XORs one, two, three, four, five. Um, so let's, uh, crap, I gotta go soon. Probably already should have gone. So let's do this one real quick. Uh, offset value equals dot parse instruction data adder. Uh, and we need length. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna do a nice little if statement here instead of what I'd normally do, which would be like different Lambda functions and stuff like that. You can look at my MSP430 uh, architecture if you wanna do that. Um, so let's do op codes. So we're gonna need to do um, a pend store, um, and let's look real quick. So looking at low level IL function, now that we're low, uh, lifting stuff, um, go to strip just to that page so we're gonna do a store first which is this one here so we need the size first the address and then the value um, so that is going to be a size offset value um, except these need to be il.const, is it constant or const? Const. And the size is gonna be one, and our value is that, and then il.constant one value. And if we'll do a lf op equals get wait this one is going to be il dot set reg size I believe this is where I start going back and forth between stuff because it's hard to remember so set reg right there size reg value so then we're going to do an il.reg and this is going to be also i believe a size and reg so it's going to be one and then this is going to be our character i think that's what we called it yeah our c and then this is going to be i believe if we look back at the uh, yeah, so it's going to be the offset. So then what we have to do is going to get a little complicated here. This is going to be an IL load of size one. And then IL const is going to be this dest, I believe. Yeah, so the address. 
and that's going to be offset. So now we have created our uh, get, which is going to be, it's always going to look something like C equals offset dot B. Um, we'll see some number here. And then this one is just always going to look like uh, offset dot B equals value. And then this one is going to be XOR. For this one, we will do IL dot, I think we store this one, right? Um, let me open that VM back up again. Whoops. I don't know why it went back to Sorry, I'm just looking for this uh, folder right now. There we go. Oh, did I put const and constant? You are correct. Thank you for catching that. That saved me a restart. Okay, so. Um, I guess my BNDB did not save. That's fun. I must have crashed or something. Okay, so when we are in set, we write directly to the bytecode and we just store it back to the bytecode over here as well. So this one is going to be an IL.store. We're going to do that. And then we'll do const offset. And then what we're going to actually store there is uh, we're going to do uh, an XOR. So we need that. And then our left side is going to be the, I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but This is the value. That's our key value, I guess. Um, and this is going to be our character that we got from the offset. Actually, no, key is what we read from the thing. So this one is going to be. Um, this one is going to be offset dot b equals offset dot b. Oh, yeah. X or c. So I guess we don't really have a key uh, thing. Although what we could do is actually let's. I know what we're going to do. We're going to do it like this. We're going to do an il set reg and use the key one. And this is going to be uh, an il.load, one il.const, uh, one offset. It's a lot of parentheses. And I've gotten lost track of all of mine. OK, and so now we've got this il append that's going to set the reg and then now we have our k uh, and l.reg1.c now what's going on here so and then if it's Alt, we'll just do an IL append, IL.ret. Um, actually, I think there's a halt, which we could uh, take advantage of, or a stop or something.
There's a trap. That's not what I want though. Okay, I guess there's not. I thought there was a, uh, a halt operation. And then, do I need something for Rhett? Dest. We'll just do an IL unimplemented there. Actually, no, let's do a no Rhett. I think no Rhett will just stop it. Yeah. All right, uh, I think that is everything that we need for it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I have my own dedicated bug support where I, I just complain to them. Uh, and sometimes get scolded by Rusty. All right, so let's see what happens now. Oh, I picked up something from there and we got some errors. Construction. Got type tuple, whoops. Hmm. I apparently returned the wrong thing. Returns int. Is it, oh, right, I don't have to return the IL, I just return the link. Because the IL is a uh, an object that's passed in that's basically like a list, and um, so I don't have to return it because it's doing it in, uh, in place. All right. One more time with feeling. Ooh, there we go. Got some uh, those, uh, but we've got more. Really? I don't, I thought I, I swore I had a K. Key. Dummy. Let's do K like that. All right, we're so close. Nope, still 450 errors. Oh, XOR is something different. I think it's XOR EXPR or something. Um, let me see. Oh, I need to go, but I don't want to. This is not where I wanted to come, is it? Crap, now I've already forgotten what I was going to look at. Oh, XOR. Yeah, XOR, XPR. Um, and normally you'd have like flags and stuff you need to set, but we don't have any flags because so, this is like a ridiculously simple thing. And apparently I quit Visual Studio. All right. Um, so let's...
let's do it one more time. Although my formatting is still looking really crappy, so we'll have to fix that later. Yeah, I gotta put some like more spaces and stuff. Man, did I not save? I did not. Hey, only 275 errors this time. Wrong type. Mm, which one am I on? Set reg. Oh, do I need a... I wonder if I have to do an IL reg. Let's make sure that's all I need. Hmm, that can't be right. What does self reg dot need? Did I close my Okay, set rag. Let's look at it real quick. It is a string value. So this is supposed to be string. Ugh. Why is it not giving me my, oh, I'm on the wrong screen, that's why. All right, size, reg, set val. Just think the error's above it. Now, corn cost one. Oh, maybe that's it. I get something backwards. Oh, yes. I passed in an expression instead of the string. All right, let's see if that gets us there. Man, almost built a little tiny architecture in an hour and a half, including lifter. Hey, no errors that time. And then if we look at this, look at that. So now you can see we've got all of our characters and stuff here. Uh, and you can also see um, if you set these, this to a, um, uh, to not be re uh, writable, you would get, uh, I think some data flow here that would actually, uh, set these, um, correct. So... Yeah, you can see here, these are the things you read in, where they get written to, uh, and then where they get read, and then where, it, so it's using, this is the key, it looks like. Um, and 98, and then 20 is, uh, 
where it's actually, so it's taking 98 and XORing it with this. Um, so actually, can we, oh, that'll be a exercise for another time, I think, but I think we can, uh, I've got an idea for another stream. But uh, yeah, so that is a small architecture. Um, I am like super late to go pick up my kits now. So uh, I think we're gonna have to end it here. Thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you uh, you watching. This is like the most people I've ever had watching one of my Binary Ninja streams. Um, so yeah, um, cool. I'm glad y'all enjoyed it and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.